let's take a look at two simple groups that we've looked at several times. First one, let's look at the integers 2, so just 0 and 1, under addition mod 2. And let's just go ahead and look at the Cayley table. So since the only elements are 0 and 1, we know 0 plus anything is that thing. 1 plus 1 is 2, mod 2 is 0. Very simple. The other group I want to take a look at is S2. So this is the set of permutations on just the set 1 and 2. <coughs> if we use the kind of a matrix notation, what we have is uh, 1, 2, goes to 1, 2 is the identity, and 1, 2 goes to 2, 1 is the only other element. Let's go ahead and so let's use our cycle notation. This is 1, 2, and this identity element, there's many ways we could say it. I'm just going to go ahead and use that. A one cycle doesn't actually do anything, so it's just better than using E. It matches the notation better. So if I create a Cayley table for that, we've got our identity element. We've got the one, two. Again, the identity element times anything is going to be that thing. And if I do one, two, one, two, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, 2 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2. So, in the end, that's going to be the identity element. If we think about it, these two things, even though we're thinking about them from a very different perspective of where they come from, they're effectively the same. They both have an identity. They both have one other element, and that other element is its own inverse. In fact, any group that we look at that only has two elements has to be effectively the same as this. Because we have to have an identity, we have to have one other element, that identity times anything has to be that thing, and because A has to be an inverse, it can't be E for the inverse. A has to be its own inverse. That has to be E. So no matter what, any group with two elements is effectively the same. What we want to do is make this idea of effectively the same more formal. We're going to call this isomorphic. And we'll get into in the next video a little bit more about exactly what isomorphic means. But for right now, let's take a look at another example that we've already looked at. We had the dihedral group on three elements. That was the symmetries of a triangle. So what we had, we had rotation by zero, rotation by 120, and a rotation by 240. And then we had, if we think about our triangle being like this, we had a, horse, a vertical reflection, we had a diagonal reflection, and we had an off-diagonal reflection. I'm not going to go through and create the entire Cayley table for this. You've actually already done it in the homework. But it's worth thinking about that that right there is effectively, again, I'll use the real term, isomorphic to S3. S3, once again, is the number of permutations on the set 1, 2, 3. And what I can think about is for the triangle, if I label 1, 2, 3, then those things get moved around by the different operations. 
R0 is just basically the same thing as the identity. I'll use the same notations up there. I'll just say it's a one cycle so it doesn't do anything. R120 is effectively the same as saying 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1. R240 is effectively the same as 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1. Now, actually it's worth noting, I did this accidentally, but I'll point it out, that this isn't the same rotation we used before. We actually did counterclockwise rotations, and these are clockwise rotations the way I've got it. But honestly, it would still be an isomorphism. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about multiple isomorphisms and things later on. Meanwhile, D keeps two the same, flips one and three. D prime keeps one the same, flips two and three. V keeps three the same, flips one and two. So again, what we really have is different notations, different ways of, of thinking where these things come from, but as a group, they come together and they're effectively the same. So, our next goal is to take that idea of effectively the same and turn it into a big formal definition for what an isomorphism is.